From time to time, I'll post an ad online looking for these big C-band satellite dishes that can still be used for free satellite television even in 2022. And often people have these things in their yards and they've been there since the 1980s or 1990s. They don't use them anymore. And a lot of people are happy to have them removed so they can reclaim some space in their yard. Now, sometimes I don't get any replies to my ads for weeks at a time, but the other day I posted an ad and within 24 hours, I had a person message me saying that they were selling a property that had two of these nice 10 foot mesh C-band dishes in the yard there and they needed them removed as soon as possible. And they were mine to take free of charge, all except of course for my time and my labor, but I was more than happy to oblige. So today's video is going to be about an overview of the process I use to dismantle and take down these big C-band satellite dishes. Keep in mind, this is an overview of the process I use to take down these dishes. All of these C-band dishes, while they are very similar, are all different and unique in the way that they are built and assembled. So the process you're gonna to see today is kind of a general series of steps you can use to take one of these dishes down efficiently. Now, a lot of people might say, why not just take the dish off the mount and put the whole thing in the back of your truck as it is? Well, that might work if you're taking down a four, six, or even an eight foot dish, if you have the appropriate size trailer or truck to put it on. But as far as 10 foot dishes go, they're just too large to place in the back of a pickup truck and secure safely, not to mention getting them home with a large dish like this overhanging the sides of your vehicle could cause all kinds of problems. So I think the best solution is to dismantle them in segments and take them down kind of like a big pizza. Now the interesting thing is I've rescued quite a few of these dishes and every time I go out and find one, the people that I'm taking the dish from are always surprised to learn that you can still use these for free satellite TV, even in the year 2022. One of the first things I like to do is to start by reaching any bolts I can while I'm standing on the ground. So any bolts holding the dish panels together or bolts holding the LNB struts or arms to the dish, I will loosen up all the ones that I can reach from the ground and remove as many of those as possible. And it's also a good idea to clip and remove any cabling that might be in the way. All of this cabling is gonna be replaced anyways. This is old, old RG59. What I usually do next is to loosen the nut right here on this long bolt that adjusts the dish elevation. This is the pivot point. If this is seized up, what I'll do is just push down on the bottom part of the dish to tip it up. Now, if that's loose and the dish is moving on its own, then what I'll do is grab the actuator arm and use it as a lever to lower the dish to a safe position. And with the dish standing straight up like this, as opposed to leaning back in an elevated position, it's much easier to place the ladder nice and close so you can reach that LMB and continue the disassembly process. And next I will continue with the removal of the dish's LNB, starting with the nose cone and then unbolting the LNB support arms. Now, if any of these are a little rusted or stubborn, then I might leave them on, but I like to at least get the LNB removed and I can finish disassembling that on the ground afterwards. These dishes are often sitting outside for 20 to 30 years. And if I can get the bolts apart easily with a wrench, then I call that lucky. But often you get a bolt that is rusted or seized and no amount of persuasion with a wrench will work. They'll either break or you'll have to use something other than a wrench like this hacksaw. Not exactly an elegant solution, but a necessary one sometimes. The center cap connects all the dish panels in the middle and this needs to be removed before you can get the panels apart. This is where I had to use the hacksaw. Next, I will continue to disassemble the panels, taking them apart from each other and also disconnecting the panels from the steel polar mounting ring. And this is where C-band satellite dishes can differ in the way that they are assembled. 
most of the time I find that the panels are bolted together through from side to side, which makes it really easy because you can disassemble the panels from each other from the back of the dish. However, in some cases, the dish panels are bolted through from the front to the back when they attach to the steel polar mounting ring, and that can make for a very awkward disassembly. And after removing some of those mounting bolts, I continue to take the panels down one at a time, which is what I usually like to do. But in this case, I hit a little snag. The top two panels of the dish were stuck together by some really seized bolts. So rather than stand on the top of a ladder and fight with those, I removed all but one of the big mounting bolts and pivoted this half of the dish downward and then just lifted these two panels off together. And the good thing is that these are made of aluminum, so it really wasn't very heavy, just a little awkward. And all that's left is this polar mount with the motor. Now I've lifted these things off these posts in one piece before, and they're very heavy, and that's really not a smart thing to do because it's not worth the risk of injury. The smarter thing to do is what I'm doing here. I'm actually removing the actuator. That's held on by two bolts, right here and right here. And I've already loosened them and it's just kind of hanging there. So I'm gonna take that down now. Save all the hardware though, so that you can put the actuator back on if you're gonna use it. It's a lot smarter to do this in pieces. It's not worth risking your safety for a satellite dish. Now we'll get the mounting ring off and what I'm gonna do here is loosen this bolt right here that holds it on to the uh, bracket and then this piece can just come off with the uh, steel post. These bolts are pretty big. You need a one and an eighth inch wrench for them and a lot of elbow grease. Okay, to get this big guy out of here, I used a hammer to tap this bolt through, but this nut on the back here of the uh, elevator bolt, I actually loosened that so I can actually rest this back in this cradle and sit it on this platform. So when I pull this bolt out, the whole assembly won't slide out and fall. That way I can have more control over it while I'm lifting it off. All right, the mounting ring is off and that's all that's left. Take the post down. And all tied down and ready to go home.